thank you guys for uh, just honoring Christ uh, just by just waking up early. Um, you know, really, it's not just about today, but uh, every day should be a representative of of Christ dying on the cross for us and rising and giving us access to. Uh, these are not my glasses. Giving us access. <laughs> He's uh, giving us access to this uh, wonderful life that we're living out. Uh, so let's 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 talk about our resurrection today. We're gonna spend some time talking about uh, the resurrection, resurrection power. I have no idea what my wife's gonna be talking about nine fifteen, but I'm sure it'll be somewhere in that bang. But um, let's go to Acts chapter four. And actually, the, uh, I was uh, meditating this week, you know, in uh, some of my reading time and. Uh, there's a passage in Acts chapter 4 that I read every day, but I ran across this, and it, of course, as I was meditating on resurrection, when you, when you put on particular lenses, that's the good thing about the Bible, when the Lord impresses something on your heart, I think the first thing you should do is to start reading through the Bible, like if you got if something hits your heart, like whether it's guys, you believe guys trying to tell you something, uh, for, just start reading through the Bible. And because what happens is when God gives you, he may give you a phrase or he may give you a thought. And when he gives that to you, uh, it's like, you know, putting on these lenses. Once you put on the lenses, uh, it'll, it'll draw out everything that's related to that particular impression that's in the word. So I was meditating on resurrection. And pretty much everything I read this week highlighted resurrection. <laughs> so anytime somebody gives you, anytime the Lord gives you an impression, or let's say if you you have to teach, or or just something that you you're believing for, or something that you're working on, uh, once you put those lenses on, look through the Word, and it'll just uh, pull out everything that relates to that. Uh, but with that in mind, Acts four thirty two, it says in the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. And the key here, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands and houses sold them and brought prices of the things which were sold, and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according to as he had need. Well, uh, we're going to emphasize chapter 33, I mean verse 33, it says, uh, key word, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them. So it, what it's saying is that, okay, you had Christ who uh, basically came, he lived there 30 years, then three and a half years, he, he basically displayed uh, what he had came to fulfill. And then, of course, he died on the cross. But before that, he gathered some, some gentlemen together. He pulled them together. And, you know, he said, okay, follow me. So he was, he was basically looking to, uh, uh, you could say, duplicate or, or, or plant some seeds that was going to be replenished. Because he's making sure when he left, things would be carried on. But it says here, and then uh, in Acts chapter 1, it says uh, they received power when uh, the Spirit came and moved on them. As Jesus had told them, he said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost will come upon you, and you'll be a witness unto me into Judea, Judea, Samaria, and to the other most parts of the earth. So, so once again, it wasn't just Christ dying on the cross and going through that process, but he wanted it, uh, we could say, advertised or marketed, or he wanted it to be shared throughout the earth. So, and the thing is, people, um, people are impacted greatly when something is real to them or impacts them in a certain way. So let's say if you, uh, um, if, if, if you started talking about healing and you heard about healing, so you heard, you know, I heard that uh, somebody laying hands on you, you could be healed. 
And so, so the person that's just listening to you is like, yeah, I, I kind of heard about that too, but it impacts them a little different because you're talking about something that you heard about, but not something that you've experienced. So the way you're talking about it is different. It's almost like, I think it might be true. <laughs> But now, let's say you walk up to somebody and you were healed. How's your conversation then? So how are you talking about it? You're talking about the pain. You're talking about what you went through. You're talking about how you thought it was going to be over, how you spent all this money on doctors and all types of stuff, and then you got laid hands on you and you were healed. Well, the way you're sharing it then, as a witness to the healing then, it has a different impact then. People, it's more believable because it's something you went through. Now you talk to people and you say, okay, I can relate to them because they went through what I went through. All right, so the per, if the person is dealing with pain and you've gone through pain and you, you're talking about the pain, they go, okay, I know you feel me because this pain you're talking about is the pain I've gone through. And you said you got healed. Now that's a lot more believable. Now, of course, the whole, a whole nother level is the same level of healing that you receive you're sitting there, you're talking to the person, you're walking through it, you, you're walking through what the word says, you're walking through what you've heard, you're walking through what you went through, and then as you walk through what you went through, you're saying, what was imparted into me, I'm about to impart into you. And you lay hands on the person, and the person is healed. What type of impact does that have? You see, so, 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 so this is what the scripture is saying. It says, with great power. They were, they, they represented or witnessed what Christ did on that cross. So uh, we talked about this last year uh, when we talked about real resurrection, but are we, are we representing the resurrection? So, so Christ died on the cross, right? He says, he says, it's expedient that I go that uh, when I go, I'm going to leave you a comforter. But he said, uh, he says, uh, when he, when he uh, resurrected, he said, all power is given unto me. So he has all power. So Christ died on the cross for us. Are we living a life? We talked about this last year. Are we living a life that Christ died for? So in other words, the life that we're living, is it a life that's representative or uh, of someone dying for us to live this life out? So when I walk up to you, when I look at you, I say, somebody died for you. The life you live in, it costs somebody for you to live that life. Or is the life you live in, you, Jesus didn't have to die. <laughs> you know, he didn't have to die on the cross. I mean, you ain't using no power anyway, so why would he die so you could have power? Why would he die so you could be healed if you're not going to exact that healing? You know, why would he die so you could prosper if you're not going to exact that prosperity? Right? Well, I mean, why would he die if you're not going to be or live as a witness, Right? All right, so with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. So, again, what witness are we giving him? Are we giving him a great power witness? Uh, I was uh, at a funeral yesterday in Richmond. Or we were at a funeral yesterday in Richmond. And uh, let's look at Revelations. Let's go there real quick. And once again, when you put on certain lenses, things stand out. And this stood out. Let's... Uh, Revelations 1, verse 18. This is actually the scripture that the eulogist, as he called himself, <laughs> this is the scripture that he used. Uh, Revelations 1, 18 says, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. And so when I heard him read the scripture yesterday, uh, of course, thinking about the resurrection, what really what stood out for me is I'm alive forevermore. So what stood out for me is a forevermore life. So I was dead. So now, of course, this Christ and he was dead and I'm, I'm alive forevermore and I have the keys to hell and death. So, so I, I well, I'll use me. Uh, I think about the dead life that I lived. And, oh, this is good because I, I didn't think about this. But uh, high school, that's like 40, you know, well, not 40, 30-something years ago at least, right? Yeah, 38, so I'm 52. Yeah, about 38 years ago. And, but I was dead then. 
right? So, so what Christ was saying, he says, he says look, look. It says, he says, uh, he says, I am, I am he that liveth and was dead. And so when I was talking to him, I thought, you know, of course, it, it's, I had uh, somebody else chimed in on our guy talk yesterday. I had, I had text somebody to chime in on guy talk, but he was from New Jersey too, but he was from the college years. So I was still dead going into college. <laughs> so I was high school, I was dead. Going into college, I was dead. And, but, so I started to reflect on, um, uh, I was reflecting on their lives and thinking like how, like when you get to, to it was way before 50, but we'll just say 50, ideally you're, I mean, you may live to be whatever, 100 or, or what have you, but as far as you're, 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 you're initiating the impact in what you want to do in this life, you probably like start to coast at 80, you know, even if you're going to live to be 100, like at 80, you ain't out there, you know, on the grind. Let's, let's hope not, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, you, but, but by then, you know, you, you got things working for you and you're watching your, your legacy, your children or your children's children doing whatever they're doing, right? Let's hope so. So I'm 52. So if 80 is what I'm supposed to be, cause that's only 28 years. That's a small window. Imagine if you're still dead at 50. So you haven't even woken up to embrace the preparation to do anything yet. So, so the window is even smaller, right? Right, so, so I was just thinking of how like, here Christ died for us. And are we maximizing the window of opportunity to live the resurrected life that he afforded us to live, to have an impact uh, uh, that uh, uh, forevermore impact? You know, remember we were talking about establishing a legacy, but are we having, you know, are we putting ourselves in a position where what we're doing now is going to have a forevermore impact? Like, like, cause he said, he said, I, uh, I am he that liveth, you know, liveth is con uh, continuous unto this point, and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore. See, even though you don't see me, what, I, what I'm doing is constantly living. Like we're up here, I'm, I'm up here talking right now because of what Christ did way back years ago. You know, we're, we're in position to impact this world and this life and to spend eternity in, uh, with, with God because of what Christ did. And, and if we, we, uh, we utilize that, that life the right way, there should be some forevermore attached to our lives. But if, we, if we're in our, little, in our own little selfish world of consumption, are we living a forevermore life? Like, okay, Christ died for us to live a forevermore life, but are we living a forevermore life? And I just start thinking about that like I was, uh, uh, I mean, I, I might be getting a little bit sensitive in my age. I don't know what it is, but, but I just, in the last few weeks, a lot of things have been grieving me in relationship to, to that. You know, uh, we had a visit uh, the other week uh, in another city that kind of, it grieved me that people, have, people had given up on the resurrected life or with the forevermore life. Some people, not everybody, but I, because of, of the relationship I, relationships I have. So then um, conversation I had yesterday, I just saw like, wow, people have given up on a forevermore life. Like, like you can afford to be in a stupor and to be dead. Like you can afford to be lazy. Like it's an option. You can, afford set, you can afford to settle for it or compromise. So Christ died for you, and the way I show value for that life is I'm going to compromise and live a, a, a life as if you didn't die for me. So you died so I could live for God, but the way I'm going to pay you back is I'm going to live for the devil. You died for my sins, and the way I'm going to pay you back is I'm going to live in sin. I mean... It's,